Time now for Anderson Speedway's Track Talk. Catch up with everything that's going on at Anderson Speedway with Rick Dawson and Gary Mong. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome to Track Talk, Rick Dawson, Gary Mong. We are at the Mounds Mall Special we are. Studio. Uh, it is Tuesday evening. Coming off uh, for a big for holiday you, weekend. Those of you that are listening to us on uh, on probably the webcast or the tape the right. part, uh, we're what we're happy that you're with us this evening. We got a lot of racing to talk about and other things that happened over the weekend. Racing and wrestling. Racing and wrestling. Racing and wrestling. <laughs> yeah. We had it. We did all at Anderson Speedway. That's right. We had the uh, had good crowd Saturday night for the we wing did. sprint cars. We had uh, we had 16 of them this time. Uh, it's better, still not show. where I went to, but they did put on a good show. Uh, Jimmy McCune, who won the last race uh, in August, is yes. when they were here with Musty Racing, set fast time, won the first 25 lap qualifier. Uh, qualifier. Grant Galloway, uh, a graduate of the. Mel King and he's up and coming. Suit. I mean, he's yes. And he hopped into uh, Jerry Powell's yes. number twelve car, a couple or a race ago, back in August. Yes. And did a fantastic job that night. He won the second twenty-five lap qualifier, and in the feature, uh, Jimmy McCune, Grant Galloway, and Ike Beasley were the three cars to beat. And Grant didn't let Jimmy get away. He didn't. He in didn't. fact, after the race, I mean, Jimmy was of course happy and. Loves Anderson Speedway because it's sure been does. pretty good to him this year. Uh, I actually took him back to the pits on the cart because they'd already shoved his car back there. And I said, you got, uh, it ain't going to be a cakewalk as once this kid gets his feeling in that seat because he's a, uh, and he didn't drive over aggressive too no, like a, like you would think a young guy getting right. in a sprint car would do. He was he used his head, kept it in one piece. I think Jerry Powell's found a jewel there, I think possibly he has. a little 500 winner sometime down the road. So and we probably should mention Rick. There's another McCune coming up the ranks there that also had a good running Saturday night. Anthony. Yes. Is that Jimmy's brother? Is is his brother? Or is his son? I don't know how old Jimmy is. And Jimmy Jimmy's almost, not that old, is he? Yeah, I think he is. <laughs> Is he? It might be his kid. <laughs> well, he's not as old as Ron Kohler, who was in the no, sprint car. That's true. Ron was Nobody 78 is. years old. <laughs> Great guy. Well, who used to, um, can't think of his name. He just retired a couple years ago. There. Hank? Hank. There Hank you go. Lauer? Yeah. He raced he into in his 70s. Him. Absolutely. And Benny Rapp, remember yes. Benny? He was a little Frank, 500. Frank Riddle. Frank Riddle. Yeah. I think Benny had it on everybody. I wanted to think Benny was pushing, was almost 80 years older, might have been 80 in his last race with us that could be and i think even uh mel kenyon raced into his late 70s and not that we were saying anything about old guys but no three-time little 500 champion uh jeff bloom was there he was saturday night had some issues with the cars early on in fact he had to pull off after about 13 laps there was something going on with the car i didn't get a chance to talk to him but jeff is looking really good he, he had, is he had a rough year last year physically and didn't look good, but he kept pressing on, and Jeff has got his senses. I he mean, he, he's driving. He just you can see the energy in him again. Yes, he's wanting to do it again. So I'm sure we're going to see him next May. And Linda, she put her patented. Uh, uh, oh yeah, she keeps him spot under control. there in the infield. <laughs> yep, you get a chance the next time we're there. We'll <laughs> try to remind people. you. Focus on Linda Bloom when yes. Jeff is on the racetrack during the qualifying and the heat races when the crews are down there. Linda is a hoot to watch. She is. But she watches for a reason. She knows what she's looking for. And if Jeff isn't doing something right, she tells him. She will tell him. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there when it's happened. <laughs> the WOFS uh, was in town also Saturday night with the Outlaw Figure Eights. This race I didn't get to see. Uh, were you in the flight? I was, the yes, stand, yes. So you can help us out. I know Jesse Tunney. Uh, great guy, the Tunney family is yes. just synonymous with figure eight racing, was there and set fast time. And uh, Jacob Garrigus from Indianapolis ended up winning the feature. Tell the folks about the race. Uh, Jacob pretty well had him covered, Rick, but the battle was for second place for most of the race, and what a battle it was. It was between uh, um, Jesse Tunney, Mike Hadley, and um, Mike Riddle, Jr. And Mike Hadley and Mike Riddle, Jr., I understand, are battling for the points championship for the uh, WFS. And after after Saturday night, I guess it's very, very close going into the season finale, which is going to be at our track on October the 10th. That's funny because Mike Hadley's dad said they were never coming back to this place. Oh, oh really? <laughs> 
<laughs> why? Want to take a bet? <laughs> I think so. But uh, we didn't do anything. I don't uh, know why he was hollering at us. Oh, I don't know. I didn't even know that happened. But anyway, those three put on a great battle. Jesse finally finally was able to get away from before time. Uh, they were side by side battling back and forth, and uh, that was to me that was the show. There was some crossover action with those guys there, but those that was the show was those three right there. But Jacob Garrigus pretty well had him covered Saturday night. He's got a fast car, and yes. most most of these guys will be in action this Saturday night at the uh, Speed Room for the uh, three hour three hour enduro race. That's the big one of the year. Pretty much the whole country, I think. Yes. You don't hear about it anywhere else, and it's a big event down at the Speed Room. I realize, you know, I don't. We have an event Saturday night also, and it'll be a great event. But if you're just a hardcore figure eight fan, uh. Go down the speed room and support, support them, them guys, because uh, I know they're they're working hard to make it work. Uh, car counts are tough in figure eights now. It is, and there's just not. You know, I've I've tried to analyze that from all different directions. Figure eight racing kind of waned for about ten years or so for whatever reasons, and we didn't we didn't uh, cultivate a new generation of figure eight drivers. So now there's not that many drivers out there. Right. And as these outlaw cars especially are just way too expensive. Yes. Uh, which, which eliminates a big pool of potential owners and drivers. But, uh, we're working hard. I've already talked to, uh, to four or five guys that's got cars that they are building and getting ready for next year at Anderson Speedway. We are having our figure eight division. Jeff Chu has, uh, uh, has worked Work with us hard, and you know we've he knows the problems we had this year. Working hard on the rules for that, we've made some changes, which I need to get up to on the internet. But most of the guys that are racing now know those changes. But to be able to accommodate more cars Good. within the rules, yet keeping them more equal. So hopefully, I know fans love figure eight racing, and Anderson's a good figure eight it track. It is. We just don't want them going too fast in right. that eight because somebody will get hurt bad. But whatever we can do to keep everybody safe and get more cars, we're working on. And we had a new, well, he's not a new driver, but in a new full-time ride in the Thunder he Roaster did. Saturday he night. Did. Uh, Dave Osborne, uh, Rodney Oliver picked up a second car and put uh, Oz in that new car and oz uh oz showed was, the guys how to do he it he did he was tickled to death he was a fast qualifier and uh he ran second in the heat race to to john robbins the first heat race and brad kendall won the second one and oz was able to he beat john to robbins in the feature john's pretty much dominated that in fact i don't know if anybody else has won a feature other than i think maybe doug might have won uh, I one think, earlier. i think doug Dugger. did earlier this year yes <clears throat> but john's pretty well dominated in, in oz i didn't see this race either but was they there was he had to work for it it wasn't given to him but then once he did get the lead uh he had that i guess it looked like the old they call it the old batmobile type car yeah uh and once he got out in front he was hard to get around but uh uh, if people that may not know Dave Oz, or they call him the Oz, or Oz, um, he came up through the Legends ranks, too, and he was very good in the Legends. I think he might have been track champion at Anderson yep. one time with that, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah. And, and he, he brings his lady with him, who was in a bad car wreck earlier in the year, and he's really worked with her and helped her. Yes. And, and they're telling me maybe the next time she's there, the wheelchair may be That's gone. great. So it be fantastic to see Yeah, that. we got her in all of her, the pictures and stuff back in the pits with the flag and the, and the trophy and stuff. So that was good. She was able to be a part of that. Well, Dave Osborne won the feature. John Robbins was second. Marty Griffin, a Thunder Roadster points champion, was third. Doug Duggar was fourth. And Rodney Oliver with that yes. newfound confidence in the two-car team. That's right. <laughs> uh, soon he'll be the... Uh, the Roger Pinsky or the Joe Gibbs or the I told him when Rick he left Hendrick yesterday, I said, Rick will, Rick will say something about you, so you just know he will. <laughs> but, uh, and I've talked to Doug. There's there's several other of these cars out there that are being sold, it, it sounds like, and it looks like you know, next year we could very conceivably see 15 to 20 of these. By the way, one of our uh, – uh, yeah, or th- he drove. He drives Thunder cars. Uh, he's been driving the, uh, uh, the Pro Compacts this year, and then he jumped into it. That's Trent Gosser, and his first time out, and, and he looked really good in it. Yeah, he finished second in the uh, in the second heat. Yeah, he, night. he got into an involvement with a car on the back stretch in the feature there, and it, it, it broke the front front end of the car there. But uh, none of his fault. He was just in the wrong place. I was really time, anxious but. to watch him and talk to. I didn't talk to him after the feature. I think I talked to him. Either after qualifying or practice, or maybe even the first heat. But he said, you know, it's taking a little getting used to because it doesn't take much 
turning on the wheel and that car will go uh, right away. So he's got to get used to it. He's another one of those drivers like the Josh Poors and, and several others we've talked about that isn't afraid to get in the car and, and try to drive it. And so, do well. Absolutely. He'll take care of the equipment. And very seldom will you see Josh or, or Trent or one of these guys get in another somebody else's car and it come back all torn up. Right. Uh, they take care of the equipment. And they're good racing. Yes, they are. And uh, oftentimes bring home the trophy. They do. But that uh, that was a great Saturday night at the Speedway, great uh, Labor Day weekend. Already working on a program for next Labor Day that's going to be bigger. Good. I already got some ideas. I want to do something a little different next year, so uh, I think the fans will really like it. We tried something a little different this year Sunday evening, on yes. Sunday evening, and the fans that were there really enjoyed it. I didn't hear one bad word about it at all. We had the infield, uh, well, a lot of folks in, inside. We actually put the the ring to the wrestling in the, in the crossover, in the crossover yeah. right on the X. It had chairs set up all the way around it, and most all the chairs were full. A lot of people standing and watching, but we had championship wrestling, and it's a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> it's different for me. I'm, I'm just not into that, but, yeah, of what I've seen, uh, the crowd loved it. They were. They put. <laughs> they on know a, all about these guys. They, they put on a great show, especially brought in some of the heavy hitters. They did. Uh, that that people really recognize the names of Rock and Roll Express, Ricky Morton, great guy. I got to spend time. All these guys, by and large, are just great guys. I spent a lot of time with them talking. Uh, Ricky Morton actually lives next door to Bristol Speedway down Tennessee. Oh, okay. And uh, he gave our invocation for us before we started. And uh, great, super guy. Uh, enjoyed being spent time with him. Spent probably a good half hour with Rikishi after everything was gone right. and everybody was gone uh, out there in the tent. Another great guy with a big heart. Uh, it's from Samoa originally. And that's where his heart is. You can tell he lives in L.A. now. And he goes back to Samoa, I think he said, at least once a year because his dad's still there. And they do a lot of charity work for that's kids great. Uh, back there. But uh, great guy. Uh, some of the moves in the in the ring, I don't <laughs> I don't get. They, they've got to be acrobatic. They I get mean, hurt. They do. Yes, they do. <laughs> Uh, in fact, we had the first match was, <laughs> was uncalled for, and Ronnie uh, Vegas, the guy that kind of put the show together for me, actually threw out. It was kind of like a, an occasional Saturday, Saturday Night Harrison Speedway threw one of his wrestlers off the property. Because he took that little dude. I don't even know what his name is, but they got out of the ring, and they were clear over by our beer tent, and he threw him into the to the beer trough. Love. Actually, I guess I'm not into it. And uh, hurt his <laughs> hurt his ribs or back or something. I don't know, but uh, I'm it wasn't anything life threatening or right. anything like that. But I know that hurt because I seen the welt. <laughs> so that but, was and that was the start of the night. <laughs> if you liked it, let me know. Uh, email me uh, and uh, let email us yep. at the speedway. Let us know what you thought about it and what we could do different. But everybody was there. Had a great time Sunday evening and. Uh, we were, it was, uh, even though it didn't make any money, it probably lost money. I, the smiles on the faces, Absolutely. especially the kids when they were leaving, uh, makes up for it for me. Right. Sometimes you have to do that to, uh, it's not all about money. And there's things that uh, we've seen ourselves that we'll say, okay, next year we can do it differently. I mean, it was a learning process for all of us. Yeah. In our first time at it. Yeah, especially putting everybody on the track. It's a little inconvenient because there's really no good way to get on and off the track. It's either the steps under the flag stand right. or it's up and down the, the ramp. And that's pretty steep. Uh, it is. And the Bird Brothers were there. You know, who's if you've been to Anderson Speedway since we you know, you know them. They they camped out. I give them heck again because it seemed like <laughs> last year every time they camped we got rain. Well, Friday and Saturday night we got rain. But but these two young men are great people. In fact, we ran into them over at Winchester, Winchester. yesterday. Big supporters of Big racing. Big sport fans and found out huge wrestling yes. fans. <laughs> so. Uh, that, that's pretty much that. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we were over at Winchester Speedway yesterday, had a lot of good racing over there, and we're going to talk to one of the winners yes. when we come back. You're listening to Anderson Speedway's Track Talk. Heart attack, stroke, serious injury. A sudden health crisis can happen to anyone at any time. So when bad things happen, choose good people. St. Vincent Anderson Regional Hospital has the area's most advanced emergency care. 
with a state-designated Level 3 Trauma Center, an internationally accredited chest pain center for heart attack patients, and advanced certification for primary stroke care. We have all the resources to deliver the care you need for any serious or life-threatening emergency. St. Vincent Anderson Regional is the only emergency department in the area with an on-site helicopter. And our $27 million state-of-the-art surgery pavilion opens later this year. Bad things can happen to anyone. Thankfully, good people are ready to help. Choose emergency care from St. Vincent Anderson Regional. The spirit of caring. Visit stvincent.org slash Anderson Regional to learn more. Honey, stop! Oh my gosh, that's Diggity's back there. You mean the new Diggity's Frozen Treat Factory? I heard it's unbelievable. Everybody's talking about it. They have everything yummy. Yeah, I heard they have ice cream, yogurt, custard, sorbet. And gelato, plus fruit smoothies, and that's just the beginning. I heard Diggity's has over 250 toppings, not 30 or 40 like those other places. And you can even get the candy to go separately. We can eat outside on their huge patio by the fire, too. Okay, let's see. Frozen yogurt, ice cream, custard, sorbet, and gelato. With 250 toppings or a plain old frozen yogurt shop with limited toppings? <laughs> Diggity's it is! Diggity's wants to cater your event. Diggity's can set up at your event inside or out and provide delicious smoothies, frozen cappuccinos, candies, and frozen treats to your guests. Diggity's is perfect for weddings, company picnics, group outings, sporting events, festivals, you name it, just call Diggity's. 765-393-0033 today for more information. Multab Incorporated, where imagination is the only limitation. We serve residential, commercial, industrial, and municipal customers as your metals warehouse and fabrication center. We do all types of fabrication using the latest technology with unmatched speed, accuracy, and durability on any substrate. Our ornamental division handles all types of interior and exterior work, including rails, fences, gates, and more. So contact us at mofabbing.com to fabricate your dreams of tomorrow today. You won't believe these deals? They're too good to be true. You cannot miss this special. We're going to give you so much off, you won't believe it. Actual mileage may vary. Price does not include tax, title, and license. Some assembly required. Batteries not included. Objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. Keep in a cooler place. It is highly unlikely that any sentiments expressed impress above in any way coincide with those. Of Wait, what'd they just say? At Auto Farm McCrockland Ford in Middletown, we're not here to give you fast-talking deals. We take the time to make sure you understand what you're buying to make sure it meets your budget. If you're at Auto Farm McCrockland Ford in Middletown, you're at the right place. This program is a presentation by Anderson Speedway. The content contained in this program is that of the host and guests, and not this station. Add to the bone. To the bone. George Thurgood. We're back. Anderson Speedway. Rick gets tracked or gets tune tagged. Every once in a while, he has to throw one in there that you know. <laughs> You've never heard of Bad to the yes, Bone? Yes, I know, but I mean... Because because there's some of them that I know that you don't know. That so I just, yeah, you just know that hippie stuff. <laughs> no, that's Wade. I know good <laughs> rock and roll. What, when rock and roll used to be rock and roll. That's right. <laughs> back when Benny Goodman was at his prime. <laughs> We're back with Anderson Speedway's Track Talk. This Saturday night, Anderson Speedway, we have the street stocks, the Markham Welding Pro Compacts that have been put on great yes, shows. Yes, they have. The Thunder Roasters will be back, see if Oz can make it two in a row. And the CSR Mini Cups that always come in force and put on a great show will all be at Anderson Speedway this Saturday night. Gates open at 5 and we race at 8. It looks like the weather is going to be Beautiful. picture perfect. Yes, mid 70s. Nice fall day. May want to bring a light jacket for when the sun goes down, but it won't be cold by no means. It isn't going to be cold, that's for sure. That's right. The beer will be. Yes. And so will the soft drinks. So we got that going. (laughs) Got a golf cup. We went over to uh, Winchester Speedway yesterday for the uh, final day of the World Stock Car Festival, I guess is what they call it. Arca CRA Super Series uh, had an okay race. I mean, it wasn't a great race, but it was a good race. Uh, and Christopher Bell pretty much dominated. He's in the 51 car. That is out of Kyle Busch Motorsports Stable. Which is what Eric Jones has been racing, isn't it? He, that car? Not, he was never in his late model. Oh, not this car here? No, oh, okay. Eric has his own late model. Oh, okay, so. okay. Uh, but he, but I think Christopher's run, uh, some truck races for Kyle. Okay. Uh, won the race and another, uh, veteran of the Super Series and our track and, and of the uh, camp, full-time Camping World Truck Series driver, Daniel Hemrick, 
uh, finished second in uh, Orange Ritchie Waters number five. Daniel was coming on. I was watching him, yep. and then if there had been some more laps, I he might have he might have caught him. Cody Coughlin was back, and uh, he finished in third. Harrison Burton, who is uh, Jeff, Burton. Jeff Burton's son, finished fourth. And uh, hats off to Quentin Bear. Uh, had a fifth place finish. Yes, good for him because I know he's been trying hard. Uh, I don't know who won the modified race. Really don't care because Jeff Lane didn't win. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, oh, it was uh, Terry Fisher. Oh, it was? Yes. Really? Terry he Fisher. used to run the yes. uh, Arcus, That's or right. the CRE Series. Right. Uh, Terry's a good guy. Yes. We also had a, the street stocks were there, and uh, Jason ben Atkinson, Atkinson. Uh, beat out uh, Mason Keller. Mason Keller had a fast car he all did. day, had a fast car in that race. And wore the tires out, according to his yes. to his dad. So Jason must have recognized that and got around him and uh, ended up winning uh, the race. The street and then stocks, the street stock race. Right. And then we they had their CRA late model sportsman cars. We're getting ready to talk to the winner, but that was an interesting. He finish. wasn't leading, <laughs> uh, going across, taking the white flag. In fact. Uh, 28 car Sean Amor was leading, and the one car I'm trying to get it pulled up because I don't remember. I don't remember the name either. The name, but he pressed him and he kept working on him, and I figured something was probably going to happen on the last last lap, but and it did. One car drove into turn four really hard and <coughs> couldn't keep it down and got up into Amor and spun him and himself, and the third. The car that was running third place who has a fa- had a fast car he all did. day and was, in fact, led part of the race. I'll talk to him here. Veteran of Anderson Speedway, none other than the 14 car of Danny Trent. And I think we got Danny on the line now. Danny, how are you doing this evening, buddy? I'm doing I'm doing good. How are you doing? Do, we're, we're doing, doing good. fantastic. Are you still up on the clouds from yesterday? <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been wanting to win there for uh, 17, 18 years. I've run second a couple of times. I haven't run there much, but... I was wanting to get one there. Was you just sitting back just waiting for that to happen on that last lap? Well, no. Uh, on that restart, when when I had the lead and he come down there and used me up a little bit, and then the next one, we we hit, we hit, was bumping a little bit, and we went down in three, and he jacked my car up, and it wasn't as good after that. It was it was on the rail before that, but then, no, it, was something, it wasn't as good after that. Were you on the top or bottom? I can't remember, Danny. The, uh, the, well, on the restart? Yeah. On the first restart, I was on the top. And then the second one, you know, he got me on that, uh, on the restart. And then I was on the bottom. I got a start and cleared him out of two. And we went down in three and he gave me a ride. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. glad you were able to hold it on. I mean, you've had some, you've had some bad luck. I know on, at Winchester and and at our truck, and it was great to see that car in one piece after the race and in victory lane. That's that's for sure. I know you had a lot of people helping. You had a fast car all day, though. Yeah, yeah, the car was great. I mean, I didn't change one thing on it for three days. I mean, it was uh. It was really handling really good, and I knew it'd be good on the long runs, and it and it was up until like lap 26 when that happened, and uh, I was really happy with the car. I mean, I didn't think a crate could really run good over there, but we get to the corners, and if it's handling, you can run good over there. Yeah, if you can get the run out of the corners, which you can on a crate car, you can get a big enough run. Uh, the other motors can't catch you down. The, they'll catch you, but they can't get around you by the time you get to the end of the into the speedway i know uh billy van meter also had a had a fast car and it was an and i seen this one and it was just one of those unfortunate things for billy when he was leading i think you were in second then weren't you yes i was rick yeah yeah i think you guys came up on the four was it the four car yeah it was two two lap cars one was the four i don't know who the other yeah. one was and they were where they shouldn't be and Billy didn't see it. It was actually in the middle of the corner, so you don't see him going into the corner. And by the time Billy seen him, he was right on him. And I'm I'm pretty sure he had to check up a little bit. And and you were right behind Billy, and kind of you you had no idea that, that was happening, and and kind of clipped Billy a little bit. But I'm sure they understood that was just strictly a racing deal, and you had nowhere to go. No, I didn't. Billy had a really good car, and I was. I was fine riding behind him because I was thinking get to 10 to go, 
and I was looking a little bit on him. He had a good car, and he was setting a nice pace for us, and uh, and I was fine riding there. And uh, yeah, he didn't have the two lap guys. He saw he went high at first, and then at the last minute he turned a little left, and I was committed there. And and I got him just a little bit, but it, it was definitely a racing incident. I would not spend Billy. I mean, we really run good together, and he had a really good car. Yeah, no, and and hats off to him because he fought from coming back from the tail clear up and finished in third place. Uh, so that's uh, hats off to Billy for for hanging in there. He he, and, he did a heck of a job, you know, coming back up there. It's really hard to pass there. Well, and you had Jason Atkinson on your tail too, which is he's no easy no. <laughs> easy one to beat either and and uh, I just think you drove I was very proud of you yesterday and um and even though you guys don't think may not realize it sometimes maybe I take liberty sometimes but I consider you one of our guys and it's That's it just right. gives me a big head when I know one of my guys beats the others. <laughs> well, thank you, Rick and Gary. I, I really think a lot of you in the track. I mean, it's my favorite track now. Salem used to be, and then I got over on your little bull ring, and uh, it's just something about racing there. It's really awesome. I mean, well, it's I know you didn't do this by yourself, and you had some help down there. You want to thank them and maybe a sponsor? Yes, yes. I want to thank Durabilt Racing, uh, and I want to thank uh, Greystone Concrete, Specialty Graphics, and then I want to thank my crew that was down there with me all week, uh, Dave Heck, uh, Brandon uh, Grant, and John Watson, and Jeff Watson, and two of my other crew members wasn't there that day, uh, Keena Owens and Kenneth Owens, they've helped me for years, and, and then to my wife and my kids for putting up with me and letting me go do this stuff, <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, yeah. <laughs> Well, Danny, I really appreciate. It. I mean, Danny's one of those guys when he pulls in the pit gate, always got a smile. He sure face, does. Always makes it a point to say hi. That's what racing's all about, and uh, we appreciate. It. Danny, thanks for taking the time with us this evening, and uh, we'll see you. It looks like in a couple of weeks at uh, Anderson Speedway. Well, thank you, Rick and Gary. I appreciate you guys having me on. Look forward to seeing you guys again. Thank you. All righty. All right. Danny Trent, uh, driver of the 14 car, and I'm not sure I don't have time with this old computer to pull it up, but he's running pretty good in our points. Point too. standings. Uh, our point leader, Jack Dossie, had a had a bad weekend, I think. It, uh, I think they had motor problems the on Saturday with, uh, with the sportsman right. car. And, yeah, because they the, ran the Super Series and car. And I didn't get a chance to talk to him after the race, but the Super Series car didn't. Found out it was something about the carburetor or something yeah, on it. So. It just wasn't running up to his turn. And, and, He's uh, another one of those Jack that Jack being one of, them, yeah. one of them drivers that, it, you know, he knows there's something wrong. It's not his day. He pulled it out, got right. it out of the way, and, and raced. This Saturday night, once again, the street stocks are in town, along with the Mark and Rally. Pro Compacts, Thunder Roasters, and Mini Cups. That's going to be a fun show. It will be fun. Gates open at 5, race at 8, come out and get some good food, some good good drinks. Enjoy the weather. Have a good time. And then Sunday, if all goes well and the creek don't rise, yeah. and the Lord's willing, we're going to try to, to uh, go over to Columbus, Ohio, for the Bud St. Amant Memorial with the uh, uh, CRA Super Series cars right. over at Columbus Speedway on Sunday. It's good. It's a neat track. It is. Knuckles family is uh, good people in fact jeff and cindy were there yesterday it's always good me and jeff get along great we're <laughs> just a character <laughs> yeah yes we have a good time with them i always look forward when i get the opportunity to go over and visit them but if you've never been to columbus Bay, it's two two and a half hours right uh east just columbus, on i-70 Ohio. so get over and see them with that we appreciate you taking the time with us this evening kids don't forget the 26th of this month is kids bicycle races right. we'll have a whole lot more on that coming up we appreciate you spending the time with us. We'll be back here. Hello, Ed Jenny. Same time, same stations next week. Catch us on uh, our uh, webcast. You can see the tapes off our website. And tell your friends about Track Talk. We appreciate you once again, and we will see you at the racetrack. Mm-hmm.